Hello, and welcome back. In this video, we're discussing components of the acceleration. So again, we're thinking about an object moving along some trajectory. That trajectory is the curve. Um, and remember, as I've mentioned before, uh, that, that acceleration of the object um, really has two uh, different factors to it, right? Acceleration can come from a change in speed or a change in direction. Now this goes along with what we've been talking about, right? We have the unit tangent vector, or rather just the tangent vector, that's telling us the direction of motion. And we have the principal unit normal vector now, which points in the direction of the turn. So the idea is, I want to take the acceleration of an object and break it down into what's corresponding to a change in speed and what part of the acceleration is corresponding to a change in direction. So that is, I want to take the acceleration vector and break it down into two components, one that goes in the direction of t and one that goes in the direction of n. So that is, our acceleration vector is going to look like some scalar multiple of the unit normal vector. So this a sub n is my tangent, uh, is my uh, normal component of acceleration. This is the turning acceleration, acceleration that comes from turning, and a sub t is my tangential component of acceleration, so that's the, uh, the acceleration that goes into changing the speed. So this a sub t could be either positive or negative, and I like to think about, like, uh, think about this like driving a car. So a sub t corresponds to either hitting the gas or the brake pedal. Gas or brake. Uh, hitting the gas would make this positive, it would increase my speed, and hitting the brake would make this negative and decrease my speed. But there's other ways to accelerate, and that is by turning the wheel. So this a sub n is how much I'm turning the wheel, the acceleration that's come from turning. So this is my wheel, acceleration that comes by moving the wheel. So what we're really talking about here is breaking down the acceleration of an object, such as a car, into how much acceleration is going into turning, how much is going into changing the speed. So for this, I like to go to an example uh, of a car going ar uh, around a bend. And for our purposes, we'll assume that the car is going along a parabolic trajectory around this uh, corner. And I don't know, yeah, some of you may have played a like a driving simulator game like Forza. Um, in that game, uh, or, or just if you've been out driving, uh, you should know that um, if you are both hitting the brake, uh, so if you're going around, you know, really quickly around a bend, and you're hitting both the brake and you're turning the steering wheel, right? So turning sharply and braking, so both a large change in speed and a large change in direction, uh, that your car is going to slip. You're going to lose traction if you do that hard enough. You're going to lose traction uh, because the wheels, the friction between the wheels uh, and, or rather the tires and the surface of the road, uh, there's only so much friction there and it has to account for all of these components of acceleration, the turning and uh, braking or gas. Uh, and so the idea is, is that when you round a corner, you want to be decelerating your speed. So changing your speed as you go into the corner and then gradually increase the amount that you're turning as you go around the corner and then you can start accelerating again, right? You don't want to do both at the same time. I mean, uh, you don't want to do both, you know, to the maximum amount at the same time, right? You want to sort of vary these. So that's what's happening as we're going around this curve, as this driver is going around the curve. Um, so you can see she's braking here. We have a negative uh, tangential acceleration. So remember, this is like braking. So she's hitting the brake, and she's just turning a little bit. This is my normal component of acceleration. She's going, she's turning a bit. So the steering wheel turned a little bit to the left as she's moving around, so to the left from her perspective, as she's moving around the corner. Uh, so turning a little bit to the left, but braking a lot more than she's turning. As she gets closer to the apex of this turn, she's going to start turning more and braking less. Right, so notice that accelerate, tangential acceleration is going down, normal acceleration is going up. So more steering, less braking. And that's good. She's being a very good driver here uh, to not also be steering this, you know, braking really hard at the apex of the corner. Uh, she might slip if she did that. 
And then we'd have to factor in a whole bunch of other things. Uh, if you've ever seen like uh, Tokyo Drift or, or a movie like this, you know that if you slip, you can still maintain control of the vehicle, but things are different at that point. We are, we're not going to get into all of that, uh, the mechanics of drifting. Uh, that's uh, a fun topic, but we, don't, we, we won't get into it here. Um, if you notice, right at the apex of the turn, she's not, tur uh, she's not braking or accelerating at all. This is the zero vector. She's just turning. So this is modeling very good driving behavior. Now, as she comes out of the corner, and this is something you should do when you're driving, even if you're not uh, a racer, uh, you should still be sort of acting like this, right? Decelerating as you're going into the turn and then accelerating out of the turn. I remember learning this when I was in driving school. So now she's hitting on the accelerator, uh, her turning, she's less, uh, not turning as much here. And as she gets to the straightaway, her tangential uh, acceleration is going to get really high and she's not going to be turning as much. So now getting into the straightaway here. So this is the idea that, uh, and really we want to move beyond just the specific example of rounding a corner. We want to understand when an object is moving through space and it's accelerating in some way, how much acceleration is going into changing the direction, how much acceleration is going into changing the speed. That's the big question here. So what we need to do in order to figure this out is we need to decompose acceleration into those two quantities. So some scalar multiple of n plus some scalar multiple of the unit tangent vector t. So how can we do this? How can we figure out what this a sub n end is and a sub t? We'd like to have a nice way to calculate these things uh, based on uh, the uh, original vector valued function r. So we could, one way to do this is to project the acceleration vector onto the unit normal vector. So this would involve, involve first finding the unit normal vector or finding the unit tangent vector and then doing a projection of the acceleration vector onto that and then finding the missing component. That would be the, you know, the missing component here. Uh, but there's actually a more clever way to do this, in my opinion, to find a sub n and a sub t. And I'm going to run through that derivation here. Uh, of how to figure these out and give us a way to calculate them. So the cleverness of this way to break down the acceleration into these two components really comes back to a trick that we've done before. And the idea is to write, uh, is to remember what the definition of the unit tangent vector is. Uh, so remember that, um, that we can write uh, t, our unit tangent vector. All right, so I try to remember this sort of on the spot, and it's not too hard to remember because we just have to remember the definition of t. The unit tangent vector, remember, is um, 1 over the speed times uh, the velocity. Or alternatively, so this gives us another way to think of velocity, right? We can think of velocity as speed times the direction of motion. So this is an important way to think about uh, velocity, and really our trick just comes from this. The other thing to remember here is that uh, dt ds, I just want to remember the chain rule for a second, dt ds is dt, uh, rather, wait, what, how do I want to think about this? I think of dt dt as dt ds times ds uh, dt. So remember, this is, has to do with the arc length parameterization and that ds dt, this is another way to think about speed, right? ds dt here, this is the same thing as magnitude of velocity. So this is another way um, to think about this. And then how does this come to, come to fruition? Well, we want to break down acceleration. So it makes sense to think of acceleration in terms of this velocity here, right? So acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? It's derivative with respect to time of velocity. And velocity here we're writing as a product of a scalar valued function, its speed, right, v, that's a scalar valued function, times this vector valued function, the unit tangent vector. So for this, we can use one of our rules of differentiation. Here's a scalar valued function times a vector valued function. Uh, and it's a product of those two, so scalar multiple. And that rule tells us we can 
uh, differentiate. So derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first is a way to think about this. Uh, so this is magnitude of v. Remember, magnitude of v is the same as ds dt. Um, so I'm going to think of speed as ds dt. So here I have, maybe I'll just rewrite this, d dt of ds dt speed scaling my unit tangent vector t. So now let's take a derivative of both of these. So derivative of the first, that's going to be the second derivative of arc length with respect to time. So second derivative, d, d, d2, d, uh, second derivative, and that'll be scaling t plus ds dt times the derivative of t. So here I'm taking derivatives with respect to time, so I better indicate that, dt, dt. Okay, where to go from here? Well, uh, this is kind of neat. One, I have now acceleration expressed as a scalar multiple of the unit tangent vector. So here, this uh, second derivative of of the arc length function with respect to time, but this is my tangential acceleration. Already we have that. So this is my a, uh, my acceleration tangentially. Over here we still have a little bit more work. I want to find my unit normal vector n here. Remember uh, what n is. Um, n is n, remember, in terms of uh, our parameter t. Um, n is, oops, I want to erase that. Remember that n we can think of as dt dt over magnitude of dt dt. So that is n, so this dt dt here is a scalar multiple of n. Um, in particular, dt dt is magnitude dt dt uh, times my norm, normal vector n. Um, but really how I want to think about this is, oops, is up here, right? This is why I wanted to reference this chain rule again dt dt is dt ds times ds dt. This ds dt, remember, is my speed. And so I can write dt dt as dt ds times ds dt. This is all side calculations. So here, I still have my second derivative of the arc length function with respect to time. Plus, now I have, I'm substituting dt dt for dt ds times ds dt. So that's ds dt squared. And remember, ds dt, that I write this down, is the same as magnitude of velocity. So this ds dt squared is velocity squared, and then times dt um, ds. And now I want to get a hold, so yeah, now I want to think of the unit normal vector. How do I get the unit normal vector here? How does it relate to dt ds? So for this I want to use that alternative formulation for the uh, the unit normal vector. Remember that the unit normal vector in terms of arc length s, it's 1 over the curvature times dt ds. So that is curvature times the normal vector is dt ds. So that's dt ds. So what I have here is d squared s squared times t plus curvature times velocity squared times my unit normal vector n. So here we have it. This is actually really, really beautiful. We have it broken down. My acceleration, tangential acceleration, so here's our conclusion. Tangential acceleration 
is the second derivative of the arc length function with respect to time. This should make sense because the first derivative is speed. So if we take a derivative of speed, we get tangential acceleration. And that should kind of make sense. So this is the second derivative of the arc length function with respect to time. We can also think of this like the derivative of the speed, so derivative of the speed function with respect to time. We can think about it like that. Um, and then my normal acceleration, so this is the acceleration due to turning, is curvature times velocity squared. And that's pretty cool. That's how we can actually calculate, uh, given a trajectory, how much it's accelerating tangentially, so braking or accelerating, and then how much it's accelerating, uh, how much acceleration is going into turning, so turning the wheel if we're driving a car. So pretty cool. In the next video, we will work through an example of circular motion, and then we'll actually go back to this driving the car and actually calculate those uh, uh, tangential acceleration and normal acceleration for ourselves. I'll see you there.